My favorites are the one with lots of money and no time. Slaves to their job, ferociously bent on making as much cash as they can. They end up with only a few minutes a week to spend with a person having sex. Are you talking about the research done by Rachel Potter et al.? Yes, I am. That's the one. Using scientific research and our own personal stories, we are going to form a a dating dating hypothesis. hypothesis. In conclusion, it's biology. It's presumptive. It's hypothetical. It's interpretive. Hey, everyone. My name is Kayla. And this is Rachel with Dating Hypothesis. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm just letting you all know, you might want to have a drink before you hit play on this episode. Right? I feel like we should rate our show's trigger warning levels by glasses of wine. This episode needs two glasses of wine and a joint. When did you choose to do this? The first time I started hating my body is when I was nine years old. Running around outside, playing, or riding my bike would result in men hanging out their car windows or trucks, catcalling me, slowing down to ask me sexual questions, inviting me to do things with them. As these men leered at my child body, I started hating men. I hated their attention. I was molested three times before I was 13. The more I got molested, the more I decided my body was good for one thing, attracting attention from assholes and perverts. Well, I didn't go through quite the trauma you went through. I do remember a time in my younger years with one of my best friends. We were leaving a movie theater and this creepy old guy slow rolls past us in his car and is like, what are you doing? You want to ride in my cool car? Newsflash, bro. Your car isn't cool and you're creepy as fuck. That experience was gross enough. I cannot imagine how you felt growing through what you did. When I was 13, I read a magazine article written by a kept woman, and I decided right then and there, I was going to be a kept woman. My body did one thing well. It attracted predators. I may as well profit from it. Men are assholes anyway. I may as well benefit from that as well. I call it my Robin Hood moment. I realized the world was full of rich old men willing to pay soft, pretty women to have full access to their bodies, and I wanted in on that. I was getting molested anyway. Men were going to take it from me anyway. I knew no decent person would want me since I had been involved in incest for years, so it seemed like a good route for me. Yeah, but you're 49 now. Why do you continue to do it? Why is this a better option than a job? And why are men willing to give financial help to someone so old? Like, there are thousands of 20-year-olds on that site, bitch. Why you? Good questions. All good questions. It does seem counterintuitive to seek out an old sugar baby. My age is my best-selling point. I know exactly why they're on the site. I know the ropes of sugaring. I know what they're seeking. I know what they need. I can focus. I'm not on my cell phone. Ever. Like, none of my sugar daddies have ever seen my cell phone. I guess that is a good point. I mean, I have seen complaints from Reddit subthreads and have even overheard boomers bitching about the younger generation being on their phone. I mean, I have seen sugar daddies on the subthreads saying things like, I am literally paying you to be with me. Get off your damn phone. Despite most sugar daddies being predatory in nature and wanting to take advantage of the multitudes of young, innocent girls, some men just want mature attention. I'm a better fit for them. Some men want a sugar baby and simply don't jive with the fresh young kids on the market. And some of those fresh young kids on the market are a serious waste of time and money. (laughs) These men have experienced that firsthand. They see my profile. It's like finding common sense. I might be 50 but when they're 97 I'm still half their age and with your age comes wisdom wisdom of the sexual kind yeah (laughs) I know a thing or two about men's bodies (laughs) why do you continue to do it and why is it better than a job well some daddies are in and out in 20 minutes once a month for a thousand dollars a month as a set allowance no phone calls or texts in between meetings No photos, no videos. A thousand dollars doesn't come easier than that for me personally. Don't get me wrong. That's not common. It's rare. But when you find that, 
it's hard to convince yourself to work for $13 an hour for a boss that micromanages you and treats you like shit. I had an arrangement with a man from Chicago that had to fly into my city once a month for business. I was in and out of that hotel room in 20 minutes for a set allowance. That got sent whether he could make it that month or not. That's the best part about sugaring, the set allowance. Don't get tricked into thinking it's guaranteed. It's never guaranteed. They can quit on you without notice and do have a constant rotation because one is always on their way out or fading away and you have to replace them. It's pretty easy to find three arrangements that will be solid for a year. And when you seek out these kind of rarities, you can juggle three or four of them in a month because you only have to see someone once a month or once a week. Just space them out. Last year, you told me you had four sugar daddies. They're okay with not being monogamous? Well, they think we're monogamous. <laughs> they think me, a girl, half their age, is completely in love with them that I sit around and wait all month for them to visit me for 20 minutes? They really believe this shit? I don't know. I've had so many sugar daddies ask me to marry them. Seems like they believe me. So you had an allowance for... How much time with them? If you total it up, it was nine hours spread out over the month. Three of them were once a month. They had no time to meet. They were married. And like clockwork, I was done in 20 minutes walking out the door. The fourth was once a month as well. But this man got us a nice hotel room with a jacuzzi tub. He would fill the tub with hot water, oils, scents, bubbles. He would have strawberries and chocolates next to the tub. And after our bath, he would give me a massage. So no sex? There's always sex. That's the unspoken given. If I ever talk about what I do with a sugar daddy, sex is implied in there somewhere. I just don't mention it because it's given. Anyone trying to sell sugaring as a non-sexual gig is lying. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I personally have had two, two in 10 years. That's not enough to be considered real in my book. All right, well, that's about what I expected. I know there's those clueless girls posting online trying to find the sugar daddy that doesn't want sex. But let's face it. When most of us hear it, we think Hugh and his bunnies. So if you hear a sugar baby boasting she doesn't have to have sex, she's probably just hiding information that's none of your business. Seriously, why is it better than a regular job? A uh, nine to five sounds more pleasant. If I have a job as a receptionist, my boss ain't going to be purchasing me podcast equipment, a $600 scooter, financing trips to Europe, Puerto Vallarta. I had so much fun there. <laughs> Hawaii or Pensacola, Florida or Australia. It sounds like easy money. Easy money. No, don't be jealous. It's anything but easy. Quick money. It's quick. If you're savvy about it and patient to find the right men, it can be quick. Shop around till you find the right one or ones, then make the best damn 20 minutes of their life or they'll be looking for the next baby. Who was your favorite? My favorite. The best one. I met on Tinder. I thought we were dating. I would visit him every Thursday night for a few hours. After a month, I realized we were only friends with benefit because I was still just visiting him every Thursday night for a few hours. I tried asking for more. He claimed he had to go to Denver every weekend to help out his mom since she was aging. A few months of this, pulled up my big girl panties and realized he was cheating on me with his girlfriend. He was cheating on his girlfriend with me. He moved in with her and then asks to see me at my apartment every Thursday morning for a few hours. <laughs> at that point, I was fuming. So as a joke, I told him I'd be willing to be his sugar baby. He agreed. Damn. So yeah, my favorite. I wish they were all like that. So you are attracted to him? Very much so. I'm a little attracted to all of my arrangements. There's this ratio of money to ugly that happens on both sides of sugar arrangements. I would rather have less money with a more attractive person than more money with a fugly. Fugly? Classy as always, sweet Rachel. Unfortunately, the more handsome they are, the more likely they are to text you all day blowing up your phone. Want nudes, dirty talk, videos. They'll cancel plans last minute when you could have gone with your friends to the mountains or rafting all day. But no, they're inconsistent 
distant, they want PPM instead of monthly allowance. They'll go months without planning to meet you and then text out of the blue and want to meet very last second. Then they'll disappear again. So in all actuality, I would not want them all to be as handsome as him because he's a pain in the ass and super inconsistent. What exactly is PPM? PPM is much worse than allowance. Allowance is a set financial gift, so you don't have to worry about rent. PPM is when someone wants to be random and inconsistent. To me, no better than a John. I mean, if you can't rely on something consistent, then why bother calling it sugar? There's nothing sweet about that. That's just stress and anxiety. And Rachel, what's the worst offer you got? This guy had delusions about sugaring. I think he had a friend that managed to manipulate a newbie sugar baby, someone too weak to stand up for herself, into a huge time commitment for essentially nothing for allowance. There are definitely women out there that are in the bowl that are super gullible and easy to prey on. Okay, so explain the bowl because all I am thinking about right now is some bizarre ass nationally televised sugar baby competition with one wild halftime show. The bowl is just a sugar arrangement. We call it the bowl. Newbies will say they want in the bowl like a bowl of sugar. Okay, I get it. Tell me more about this delusional guy, though. This guy wanted to spend every weekend with me. All weekend, all night, sex all night for $400 allowance per month. I laughed so hard when he told me what he wanted. He's all, but I can't afford more. I want to enjoy our time together. And you'll be getting a free vacation every weekend you could never afford. I will make sure to take care of your needs too. I'm very giving that way. I finally had to tell him, bitch, a hoe is $300 per hour plus the cost of a hotel. Why the fuck would I spend 192 hours with you for $400? That's $2 an hour. What the fuck? And that constitutes a sugar arrangement. I'm going to be missing my friend's birthdays, my friend's baby showers, pretty much every friend's anything to be with you. All of my weekend chores would need to be done during the week after school and work so that I can devote every single entire weekend to his needs. When the fuck am I supposed to do my laundry or buy groceries? When am I going to get me time hanging out with my friends, have time for my boyfriend? Dude was dreaming. He argued with me for about everything that I would be getting out of it. All night great sex, great food, awesome hotel room in the mountains, getting to ride on the back of his motorcycle with him. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Dude, that sounds like torture. You're fat, ugly, balding, short, old, have a nasty beard, and smell weird. The saddest part to me is he probably eventually found what he was looking for. Some of the sugar babies online are so new, so innocent to it all, shy, too scared to say no, and desperate for cash. I think they agree to something that they hope pans out in the end. It doesn't. Don't do it, ladies. Men will take advantage of anything that shows signs of weakness. You're making me gag over here. I need to take a commercial break. Do we have any listeners who are sugar babies or were? How long were you in the bowl? (laughs) That still just sounds so marijuana-y to me. (laughs) Write to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. And we're back. So, Rachel, how did you start out in the bowl? I started when I was 19 in L.A. So how exactly do you start, though? There are multitudes of websites. The largest one is Seeking.com. Wait, have you found anyone on Craigslist? Not on Craigslist. I only do Seeking.com. I've tried others, like Rent a Friend, What's Your Price? Like a dozen others like that. But Seeking's is kind of like the only one, really. We do not have endorsements with any of these websites. Once I create a profile, it can take eight weeks to finally make an arrangement with someone. I have to weed my way through the site. The men can see if you click on their profile or not. So you can't just go through quick and emoji heart all their profiles to get their attention. You have to sit there and click on each profile so that they can see that you've looked. Then they will either ignore you because they don't like your profile picture or they'll click your profile. Mm. Men have to wade their way through bots. I'm on the sugar baby side of the site. There are almost no fake men profiles. In smaller cities, they have a few. The website puts up fake profiles to make it look like there are more available men than exist in real life. It looks good to have choice and variety, 
But when a girl clicks on a fake male profile, nothing happens. When a man clicks on a fake female profile, he gets led down a rabbit hole of OnlyFans, girls selling photos, subscribe to my website and such. For the most part, the men are going to be real. So I notice you keep mentioning male and female. Are there sites for same-sex sugar babies or sugar mama websites? There are definitely sugar mamas. Not many. Almost none but they exist. Usually, 99% of the time, if you get a message out of the blue for a sugar mama from a sugar mama, that's fake. That's a scam. But there are sugar mamas on these sites. There are couples looking on these sites together. There are tranny babies, johns, lurkers, Splenda daddies, and there are losers who pretend they want a real relationship or are looking for marriage. But given the site they're on, What are they really looking for? Most certainly not a real relationship as they claim. They're there looking for a cute, young, gullible woman who is willing to wait on them hand and foot in all ways, foremost sexually. The women who fall for this end up stuck in sick pretend relationships where they have no money of their own. It's all his. They don't get to have an opinion on anything. They're not allowed to be upset or want anything he doesn't want to give them. They're treated like blow-up dolls. The financial benefits are getting to live in his house, right? In his car, go on vacation with him. You're basically a pet. Sounds great until you're actually stuck living like that. No freedom, no money of your own, no voice. Not allowed to be unhappy in any way because he'll drop you like yesterday's diaper. Sounds like they just need to invest in a robot sex doll at that rate. Like, I truly can't understand how anyone could be convinced to be a partner in a relationship like that why would anyone do it money they have their eye on the prize but it never pans out so you mentioned how some are lurkers what exactly do lurkers do do they just stare at profiles or what i wish Pretend you're a shy man who has been married for 10 years and your wife won't put out. You're broke. You're dying of loneliness and you need to masturbate. But looking at photos or videos online doesn't get your dick hard. You want to talk to someone. You want to feel the interaction and emotion of the conversation since you live like a hermit without human interaction. They sound like energy vampires. Yeah, don't they? They have access to free porn online, but they create a profile on Seeking.com to get access to tons of women because women hope he's going to be their jackpot savior seems like the internet alternative to sex hotlines yeah just fake your income stats to a million or more and the girls flood into your inbox you never spend a penny outside of the site fee men like this would never match on tinder with anyone on seeking.com if you fake your income in your profile you're guaranteed matches dozens if not hundreds if you play your hand right being coy about meeting up in real life but being bold about needing to see nudes first so you don't get catfished or whatever you have a harem of girls at your beck and call you can get their number text them for months before they catch on and smarten up and block you some newbies are so stupid they literally will send nudes and videos for months without getting a penny and then come and complain about it on Reddit. All you have to do is lead these stupid girls on. You need to have an excuse for this or that. You just play them. On the flip side of that, girls will have a guy Venmo them cash and pretend to set times to meet them, but then we'll just send nudes and videos instead. And then they'll have like an accident or an emergency as to why they can't meet, but they play the guys and keep getting Venmoed. There's so many games. It's like a minefield. Do any of these websites have guidelines? Like if you're caught scamming your sugar daddy or baby, do you get banned or anything? Yeah, they have language recognition software that rejects you from the site if you mention pay, money, or sex. Okay, so if I wanted to get on the site tonight, what would I do to find a sugar daddy? I'll be your sugar daddy. (laughs) (laughs) When you're new on the site, have a sheet of paper with your goals in front of you. Message everyone, old, fat, ugly, photos, no photos, young, couples. You literally never know where the jackpot is. Now, it's so important to only engage with people past the initial greeting of six sentences if they start checking off your goals. For me, that is a willingness to meet in person within seven days, including coming up with a time, day, and place to meet. 
if a man is not willing to meet within the next seven days, I block him. If he can't set a day, time, and place, I block him. I'm not interested in games. How do you deal with the rejection? I don't. I never feel rejection. These are losers. If you're delicate and wanting to be a sugar baby, the vetting process will destroy you. These men are pigs. Why would I message old, ugly people? I want the classic, hot, rich stud. That isn't realistic in many cities or for anyone who's not a perfect 10. Wait, there's a rating system? Like, do you get reviews too? I feel like you're telling me there's a freaking Yelp for sugar babies. That would probably be helpful as well. But no, I just mean <laughs> if you're not what men consider to be a 10, then don't expect a hot, rich guy to be willing to message you. So unless you're a 10, you can't be a sugar baby? That's not what I mean either. If you create a fake profile today pretending to be a man so that you can see all of the women's profiles, yes, I did that for research purposes, of course, you will see the full gamma of who's in the bowl. Anorexic, obese, fit, every color, every height, tattoos, pure lily white sweet young things, and goth. It's all there. There is someone for everyone. So why automatically block them if you don't get something in your one week time frame? Isn't that a little intense? Maybe some of these guys genuinely wanted an arrangement and were shy, scared I'm a cop, nervous about meeting in person since it's their first time and don't know what to say or ask for. So what? I don't give a shit what their excuses are for not being upfront bold forward and setting a time to meet this week newbies are a waste of my time they're wishy-washy they try to nickel and dime you they have zero appreciation for how good a solid committed long-term arrangement can be for both parties therefore i'm uninterested someone else can break them in and teach them the ropes i don't have time for that shit damn rachel you sound like a bull at the rodeo everyone knew is scared to ride Yep, I got the well-trained cowboys willing to saddle up and take this eight-second ride. <laughs> so let's say a guy does ask for nudes before making an arrangement. Is that an immediate block? There are other reasons men ask for nudes before meeting a sugar baby in real life. They have made arrangements with sugar babies before, and when she takes off her clothes... The shape is not true to form, or all kinds of things that can be off-putting for them, especially since they're paying, like stretch marks from weight loss or birthing. I suppose, seeing as they are paying for a product, it's only fair to let them inspect it first? No. I refuse to send nudes. I don't want an arrangement with someone not willing to take that risk. I want someone who has the time, patience, and cash to meet me for real and test that shit out in real life. If they're too broke to meet, not willing to risk disappointment, then I'm not interested. I have zero sympathy for what they go through. I'm focused on what I have to go through on my end. If you are chatting with someone online and they will not set a time to meet you in real life, they're not likely to meet you in real life or make an arrangement with you. You should not have to work at it. On a site like that, it's literally a site for live real people to meet other live real people in the flesh. So what about the one-time Tims or the right this minute Richards? The guys who are looking for the immediate meetups before an arrangement is made. Yeah, the Johns. They're all over these sites. They only want to meet you tonight. They won't set a day or time to meet later this week. These men have zero interest in an arrangement. They just don't know where to find a prostitute and are tricking girls into meeting them immediately. Then they disappear. Pump and dump. For me, that is a body count issue. No way. I am not going through that many bodies. Ideally, I would find three men that I can trust long term for like 10 years so that I only have to see them. Unfortunately, men lose interest after a while. They want new booty or they want to get married. It's difficult to find the married men who basically want a second marriage. When you do find that perfection, it is so important to never bring your shit into it. Play your part every time. Treat it like a job and it will take good care of you. It's too bad none of my husbands would put that professionalism in our marriage. I think a lot of marriages would do better if spouses were a little more professional with each other. Has there ever been one you would have considered marrying? 
Or do you like the job aspect of it, keeping an air of professionalism? I would never marry a sugar daddy. The very nature of what they're seeking is repulsive to me. These men are selfish, greedy, entitled assholes. Okay. You mentioned it earlier. What is the difference between a sugar daddy and a Splenda daddy? A Splenda daddy looks for discounts. They want you to host so they can save money, but then they stink up your house with their nasty man smell. And then they know where you live. They only have a small budget of disposable income, and by making an arrangement with you, they're now broke, which means they can't afford to sugar. Sugaring involves presents. Splenda daddies are broke after the allowance, so it's just a bad date with low-quality food if you're lucky enough to get fed. They do this even though it breaks their bank because it's guaranteed sex. How would you recognize at the meet and greet that he's a Splenda daddy rather than a sugar daddy? I was at a meet and greet with someone who seemed promising until a half an hour later, he still had not removed his sunglasses or hat. So basically, I had zero idea what his aura was like. I could hear his voice, see his shape, but I had no access to his eyes. We had not even made eye contact, and he's asking me if I'm sensual enough to warrant a $1,000 a month allowance. They're wormy, like worms wriggling around the financial aspect of the arrangement trying to worm more out of you than they can give. Splendid daddies try to make up for the lack of financial ability by tricking you into thinking you're getting their godlike skills in the sack. I'm not interested in the ones who think they can make up for the lack of financial ability with sexual prowess. Or worse, the ones who want to make it all about me and make me feel good. Having some gross-ass sicko eat me out makes my gag reflexes kick in just thinking about it. There are fuglies out there that just want to eat pussy for hours and hours on end. It's so gross. No thank you. That is the last thing I'm in here for. I prefer to keep fluid exchange to zero. Nada. Well, you were a beginner once upon a time. Did you have to wade through a few Splenda Daddies before knowing who was the real deal? Yeah, I made mistakes and arranged with Splenda Daddies before. One in particular put a video camera wrapped in a towel on the couch during our first meeting. I left no words. As I walked past the camera, I flipped it off. I'm happy to make videos. I hold their phone to video for them from certain angles, but doing it in secrecy? Hell no, bro. Not happening. Trust broken. I'm out. Another one wanted me to roll in dollar bills, scooping them up in my tits. We made an arrangement, but it turns out he was only in the country for a week and was from a poor country. He acted like $51 bills on the bed was a mountain of gold. I'm like, fuck this, dude. This is $50. I'm out of here. Another one was cheating on his girlfriend in her house. Trying not to get my scent everywhere. He made me do it on a towel on the floor. Like, what the fuck? Get a hotel, asshole. That's Splenda. They want to take you shopping instead of paying allowance. And then they'll buy you a single cheap bra you would never wear in real life. They want me to wear it for their fantasy. How the fuck is that beneficial to me in any capacity? They don't want to give you allowance, just mentorship. They want to talk to you about how they got rich, leaving out how their parents were rich, so you think you can be rich someday if you fuck them while they talk about money. They hope you're dying for the proximity, just to be near their wealth. Kind of sounds like the girls who end up on the director's couch, hoping to be the next big Hollywood star. Yes, exactly. So they give you an allowance. But then Splenda Daddies are not taking into account the expenses of being a sugar baby, like STD testing, gas to drive to them, sexy clothes, time off work. If you're available or on booty call, how can you have a job? Many don't. So the allowance is literally their means of survival. And then Splenda Daddies will say in their profile, fine dining and travel. But then they have to be discreet, so they never leave the hotel room. Hands down, the easiest way to spot a Splenda Daddy is every fucking single time. 
every one of them thinks that they can grope you at the coffee meet but not gift your gas to get there. Fuck that shit. If you plan on kissing or groping, that's an arrangement. That's arrangement behavior. So slip me my envelope for the month. If I show up to coffee meet so that we can assess each other, fill my gas tank. How do you deal with a groper? I say to them, ah, so we're in agreement and now we're entering our arrangement. Do you need my Venmo? I don't pay to coffee meat, but I sure as hell will grab your crotch, rub your ass, squeeze your tits, and rub you up against my body. Ask for a sample, shove my nasty tongue down your throat to check for chemistry. But don't make it transactional by asking for an allowance so soon. Some guys will trick women into a test drive. (laughs) Not me. One said to me, I never make an arrangement with a sugar baby until she proves she can do it right. Uh Uh-uh, nope. I walked out of that coffee meet. I've had men message from two states away asking me to drive 14 hours to meet them. And they ask this while refusing to discuss allowance. As far as I can tell, that's fast-tracked getting raped. Splendid daddies are on a similar spectrum of wealth as sugar daddies, just lower. I had a Splendid Daddy I didn't realize was on the spectrum who took me to Puerto La Vallarta. How do you say that? Puerto Vallarta. He took me for a week up until this trip. I was happy with the arrangement. However, I lost interest during the trip. The first day was normal. I had no idea he was Splenda still until the second day. We had to listen to a thing like a timeshare subscription pitch or something. I realized we were there on this super discounted deal. Then he wouldn't take us anywhere. He just wanted to fuck in the hotel all day and all night. He insisted on only eating authentic local food, which means we ate 50 cent tacos for a week. I got fed up in the middle of it and had a day to myself. I was like, I'm going to be back tonight later. I used the money I brought. I got a taxi. I went to go swim with the dolphins, bought my own photo package, got myself a souvenir. That ass hat had the nerve to be jealous when I came back with cool shit, photos of me swimming with the dolphins. He's all, why didn't you invite me? When I literally asked for days what we were going to do and listed the 10 things I wanted to do. He said to my face, I can't afford that. He didn't buy me a souvenir. The worst part was he only bought me one drink a day. I don't drink much, but in that kind of circumstance, drink be necessary. So you don't like sugar daddies. You don't like Splenda daddies. What do you like? I'm not sure what you call them. But it's what I described earlier, the long-term quickies. They're that borderline between Splenda Daddy and Sugar Daddies. They have the financial ability, but no time. Every single one has gifted me a present during the first meet. So I knew at our coffee meet that they were serious, interested, and considerate. They're not cocky, arrogant, self-entitled jerk-offs like a lot of Sugar Daddies are. When a Sugar Daddy can actually afford an arrangement... They want your time. I don't like giving my time. My time is precious. I don't like people in general. And the more I get to know someone, the less I like them. This is universal for me. So it's actually not a good idea for me to get to know them because the arrangement is doomed at that point. I'm willing to pretend to worship someone for two hours a week. That's it. That's my tolerance level. My favorite is when they take off work get a hotel, zip in and out in under an hour, and they go back to work. That's the fucking best. Slam bam, thank you ma'am. The small talk stays small. You barely get to know them, but after a year, you've gathered enough information to feel like they're a good acquaintance. You know enough about them. We both maintain our own private lives. No probing, no prodding, no questions. I don't have to hear about their drama, but the long-term quality of it generates a certain comfort level with each other. You start laughing with each other, looking forward to meeting up. It isn't a drudgery. No one's asking for much. It's not a downer in any way. It's light. It's happy. Anything more than that is a chore. It's difficult to maintain without wanting to gouge my eyes out. If they have too much time to talk, things get sour real quick. And I find myself hating my life and wanting to kill something. That's why I do much better with something in between a Splenda and a Sugar Daddy. The level of asshole in Sugar Daddies is over the top. I can't handle that shit. What do you mean? Tell me more about that. They try to impress you with their cash, 
but they don't want to give you any. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes what they give you is huge, but not for them. It's pennies to them. So they give you what they consider pennies and act like they should be worshipped for it. Just admire my money. Don't you want me so much? No, I want your money. You're making it transactional. You're fat and ugly and gross and cheating on your wife. So they get off on the power play of a girl wanting their money. It makes them feel desired, which is weird because you don't actually want them, just their money. And they dangle it to see who is willing to dance the most for it or jump the highest. I lose interest real quick when I match with losers like that. I don't have time or interest in lining up with a bunch of other girls online to make them feel special. These types prey on the weak, newbies, and financially desperate. You told me before they will make an arrangement and immediately want you to double what you are giving without them giving more. Yeah, almost every single one has tried this. And I'm like, sure, we can double our arrangement. I don't want to double our arrangement. It's the honeymoon stage. I'm just trying to get to know you. Don't make it transactional. It kills me every time they say that. Don't make it transactional. Dude, get a real girlfriend. So before our commercial break, I want to ask anybody out there willing to interact with us, do you know these terms that we're using? PPM allowance, sugar daddy, Splenda daddy. Where have you read or seen about stuff like this? Like I read about it when I was a kid in a magazine, kept women. Like where have you heard about it? What, what stories have you listened to or anything like that? Just write into us. Tell us your stories. We have TikTok. We have YouTube. And we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. And we're back. I am seriously going to regret this, but please tell me more about the sex. They smell. They smell. They smell. They all smell bad. Bad breath. Poopy, hairy buttholes. Hairy eyebrows and ears. Flaky skin. Creepy toenails. Bad kissers. Bad sex. They want it loud. They try to be all sensual, but they don't text, call, or snuggle. I mean, like, I don't want them calling or snuggling, but how delusional do you have to be to think a girl is real under those circumstances? They literally ask me if I came. Every year gets more difficult to paint on that convincing face. Like, they actually want to feel like gods, and they want you to love them, but have zero feelings for so they like to be worshipped, plus they want their penis worshipped. They want you to writhe all over them to try to get their money, but won't give you anything substantial. They dangle the carrot and get mad when you catch on. They want you to worship their money with your pussy. They're all childish, selfish, and act like I owe them my body, soul, sex, adoration, extra time. Every single one acts like their $100 bill is made out of gold. I've had men literally rub their cash on my naked body and want me to want it. I've had men hand me my allowance while they whisper in my ear, you know what this is for, and then push me down to my knees. They want a genuine connection that they pay for with a hot chick and then treat you like this while they're old, wrinkly, have bad breath, breathe in your face, snuggle you while they lift their arms so your face is in their hairy old disgusting armpit. They're cheap. They sweat. They're cheating on their wives, which means they want you to grovel for the opportunity to have sex with them. Worshipping their subpar tactics and lame personalities. Worshipping their pot bellies. Their 90-year-old bodies gush about how hot they are and how amazing their penis is and how that five seconds of sex was super great the best i ever had if you smile talk nice and are patient then they ask you to marry them like why the fuck would i subject myself to that shit every day all day all night every single one says why won't you marry me i could fuck you right like this all day and all night and we could wake up at the wee hours of the morning and have sweet love really is that what's happening here sweet love you know literally nothing about me nothing I had a sugar daddy in LA who was 94 years old. He had Parkinson's disease. He was a millionaire. He insisted I marry him 
Every day, he kept driving us to the courthouse and trying to get me to walk in with him. He was not capable of having sex. So instead, he wanted me to fuck other men gangbang style in his living room. I refused. I had that arrangement for seven months before he realized I was never going to marry him. I was never going to fuck people in front of him. During that time, I made friends with one of his friends. He had a best friend that would come around sometimes. And after I left, we kept in touch for a little while. And I'd be like, hey, how's he doing? You know, has he found somebody yet? That sugar daddy married another girl within two months after we broke up and then died a month later on a cruise ship trip. His best friend called me crying. He'd had a bad feeling about her and he was like, tried to tell his friend. His friend wouldn't listen and I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you have met some crazy characters during all of this. How many have been millionaires? Just a few. The most recent one spent two years wooing me, asking me to marry him. He owned two mansions. Sounds great, right? Uh, hell yeah. Why the fuck didn't you marry that guy? I'm trying to tell you, Kayla, these people are weird. They're touch starved. Their egos are unbelievable. This man wouldn't feed me. We didn't eat. We didn't go to restaurants. He didn't cook. He didn't order in. Like in a vanilla relationship, the man will take you on dates to restaurants. Husbands will feed you. This man didn't eat with me. But he wanted me to marry him. I would bring a bottle of wine with me to his house so I could get through the evening. He repeatedly called me an alcoholic. I don't have liquor in my house. There's no beer, nothing. I don't go to bars. <laughs> I only drink when I was near him or socially, right? Or when I'm sugaring. He was constantly calling me an alcoholic. And I was just like, dude, if only you knew. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, all my sugar daddies think I'm an alcoholic because I I always drink when I'm at their house. My <laughs> current sugar daddy called me an alcoholic. It's so funny. So many complain about their last sugar baby being an alcoholic. Dude, we only drink around you. It's the only way to tolerate your touch. You need it to be real. Okay, more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but a millionaire. I mean, come on. All these men, I never met a single person in these men's lives. All these men asking me to marry them. I've never met their families. We don't hang out together with his peers, my peers. I don't meet his friends. I come over, we fuck, I leave. They're basing this marriage proposal off of that behavior. Their social skills are seriously lacking. This particular guy talked about himself as if he was like a god. How could I survive 30 years of living like that? He was only 60. Yeah, but the 97-year-old, that's only like three years. Nah, with my luck, that asshole would live up to be like 103. I bet that point I'd be bloated, obese, drunkard. <laughs> Six <laughs> years of putting up with that antidepressants. Oh my god, I'd want to kill myself. <laughs> Okay, but the six-year-old doesn't sound that bad. He was a millionaire. He was also a cheapskate at the same time. He asked me to spend more time with him without adjusting the arrangement, complained about the money he was giving me, then would turn around and spend crazy amounts of money on stupid shit. One time he sat there bragging in front of me about this chair on his deck, going on and on about how each one cost $5,000. And like his weird personality, I could tell it was his attempt at convincing me to marry him. Like, I can just blow $5,000 on a chair. <laughs> Don't you want me? So like he kept bragging about these millions thinking, that I would get interested or jealous or something. But it was so frustrating to him that I wasn't salivating for it. But he never gave me any. All I got was allowance. And it was like just basic allowance. I saw zero generosity towards me financially. He didn't take me out to eat. He didn't buy me presents. We didn't go anywhere, right? It was like, well, if that's what our marriage is going to be like, hell no. All you're going to do is take away the allowance. And then I have to do this every single day around the clock. Fuck that shit. As far as I was concerned, the marriage wouldn't have been any different. When a man shows you himself with his actions and behaviors, you should take that at face value. I would have been married to a millionaire who didn't take us out to dinner, didn't take me anywhere, would hide me in his house and not spend anything on me, just himself. When he finally realized that I was never 
going to marry him, he asked me if I had any good money patent ideas or retail ideas that he could use to open a business. Not for me, mind you, for himself. <laughs> like, why would I give him good ideas for a business for himself? Six weeks after we broke up, he married a sugar baby he met online from Florida. So you're saying you wouldn't do that? If an allowance wasn't involved, you wouldn't be with someone on that website? There is zero chance of finding me with anyone on that site like that, if not for the financial arrangement. There are men who use those sites as dating apps, looking for women willing to date up. The problem with that is men are not willing to date the women who they find wanting to date up. It's a scam. They're not dating those women. If they were, the women wouldn't be expected to put out any more than anyone else out there dating is. But given the site these people are on, sex is a given. Even if the man says he's uncomfortable making arrangements with sugar babies, he's there looking for women on the sugar platform. Women willing to have sex with rich men. I mean, I don't know. It sounds good, right? Why not date them? These are men who have to eat anyway. They're going to these concerts anyway. They're going on vacation and taking these trips all by themselves alone. They cannot afford an arrangement, but they have just enough money for a second meal, a second concert ticket, another flight. Oh, the hotel room is already paid for, so why not have a woman there with you? They're willing to pay the way to things they already do, but you don't have a say in where they go. Plus, you have to put out and be perpetually happy. It's a given because of the site he found you on. If he found you on OkCupid, okay you would never feel the need to put out or to be happy. That's why they look on Seeking.com, a whole different dynamic in their favor. And they know they're getting free sugar babies just by changing the title to Dating Up. We're running out of time for this episode. What else can you tell me about sugaring? I hear you say all the bad things, but damn, it seems like a good arrangement if you have the grit. Finding someone compatible is like finding a needle in a haystack. Too many men are on the site plowing their way through, boning every girl that's foolish enough to fall for it. They profile for an intelligent lady, but when I want to talk neuroscience with them, they have outdated knowledge or they're just dumb. 90% of them refuse to wear condoms since they're paying for it. Too many are on there seeking anal or oral because they can't get it from their wife, but they offer an allowance that wouldn't even cover regular STD testing. The part that blows my mind the most is that they pay you for something and then fall in love with you, fall in love with the lies, and think you actually like them. Like, what the fuck? You're paying you realize you're paying for this like you are paying me to act like you are a god you pay me to not have an opinion needs feelings ideas or emotions of my own you're paying me for my company you honestly believe i would only want sex from someone like you for the rest of my life my current 91 year old honestly believes that i enjoy every second I spend with him. He is genuinely confused about why I won't marry him. He admitted up front, if we got married, I would not be able to inherit anything since it's in an ironclad will to his family. But he wants to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about why I won't marry him. He literally asks me, don't I please you enough? I thought I got you off tonight. We could be this happy every day instead of just once a week. I promise I would fuck you this good every day. This is a man who could never imagine what I actually like or enjoy in life because he knows nothing about me. Okay, yeah, they're delusional. I have been to hundreds of coffee meets where the man immediately asks me where I live, where I work, what's my address, asks me about my family, my friends, my hobbies. All the while, he's zip about himself. Their information has to remain private since they're married. These men want full access to my apartment, my email address, my phone number, my socials. Like, what the fuck? They're so entitled. The bad ones won't pick the same time to meet every week. For God's sakes, a true sugar daddy golfs every Tuesday at four. Just get a hobby, dude. It's not that difficult. So many sugar daddies are in open relationships. 
open that they have to pay for. You know she ain't paying for sex on her end. This is so depressing. You purposely surround yourself with losers who treat you like shit. Even your own boyfriend treats you like shit. Tell me about your current sugar daddy. I have heard you talk about him, and he genuinely sounds like a sweetheart. He is. But even sweethearts are just entitled selfish men. He budgeted to get a sugar baby in the hopes of convincing her to marry him within a year. He spent the entire year wooing me with the intent to marry me, never introduced me to anyone in his family. None of his friends took me to Pensacola for a week, wants to go to Australia for a month. He continually says, marry me so we can run away to South America. What? I'm not a caretaker, free housekeeper, pet sitter, masseuse, cook, and chauffeur for an old man. When he takes me out, we go to Denny's, but he can afford to take us to Australia for a month. I got him a $300 prostitute he could eat out for an hour since it's the only thing in life he wants, and I'm not going to let him do that to me. I got him a remote control truck that he really likes to play with his cat. He didn't celebrate my birthday except for a card. I was super lavish on his birthday. Same with Valentine's Day. But he wants extra sex on both of these days from me. When we were in Florida, he kept tipping the restaurants 10%, so I would slide my, like, full amount of the tip under my plate. It was so embarrassing. If you feel like you hit the jackpot with me and I am way out of your league, then pay up, motherfucker, and be grateful that I'm willing to grin and bear it. This enlightens me to why you believe all men are pig losers. You surround yourself with the worst of the worst. Yeah, well, someday... I will have a degree. I'm going to make my own money. Then I will look for decent men willing to treat me with a little respect. Do you think they exist? Yeah, they exist. I would like to introduce next week's episode. Episode 21, Power Tripping and How It Strains a Relationship. The power balance in relationships is delicate. We all need to feel powerful in some capacity. Submissive behavior can be a form of power tripping. How do you deal with partners that power trip on you? How do you regain your own sense of power? And is it worth it to stick around and play that game? We want you guys to submit your ideas, stories, and questions pertaining to next week's topic. You can email us or join our Patreon. We want to hear from you. And if you got anything out of today's episode, please give us some love. Subscribe and rate us. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. We We love love you. you. See you next week on Dating Hypothesis.